analytics has two parts to it. Okay? The first part is what, what I call analysis, for the lack of a better term. It's, um, it's basically physics-based. Um, utilities are already used to it. They do load flows and optimizations and things like that based on actual physical model of their distribution system. They, they have resistance, reactance, all these different kinds of parameters that can be mathematically modeled using physics. So it's a physics-based analysis or analytics. That is one side of it. Second side of it, there are a lot of things that utilities have where you cannot use physics to model things. Okay outages happening or customer behavior and, and different kinds of these things cannot be modeled using physics. So it has to be modeled using statistics. So use statistical models, correlation, regression, different kinds of statistical analysis techniques to do that. And that is what is typically called analytics in the market today. But the other side is analytics too. And to give the maximum benefit to the utility, you have to combine them. So the analytics part is very useful in understanding customer behaviors, load profiles, and how unpredictable things happen, how the outages happen, what is the impact of certain things on the out outages, like faults and reliability. Okay, so that is one part of it. So it's very, very beneficial there. And the physics part of it brings in the distribution network or the grid into the picture. Okay, because utilities in the end manage the distribution network. Okay, so it has to be brought into the picture. So when you combine them, you can actually provide a lot of value on the grid operations and planning side. How do you upgrade your system better? Where do you focus? Where are the hot spots? And where are the voltage issues? Where are the, which locations have asset overloads? And all these different kinds of things. So that's, that's how you combine those things. And then you basically ask the question using math, mathematics again to say, how do I improve things? And if I upgrade these certain things, what is the impact on my reliability? Or what is the impact on loading? So it is these kinds of things that utilities can figure out by using um, analytics, both physics-based and uh, statistics-based. The vendors need to understand analytics very well, mathematically modeling this different system. And they also need to understand the utility very well too. What are the hot spots for the utility? What, is, what are the goals of the utility? So they need to be able to translate the analytics mathematical part into something that is useful for utilities that can actually address what the utilities want to do. So reliability, power quality, I mean rates, and the DER integration, many of these things. There is a customer side or, or, or analytics side to it, and there is a physics side to it. And then there are specific use cases that the utilities have. So all of them have to be trans translated into the mathematics. So you really need to have a good mixture of mathematical understanding and a very good understanding of how the utilities operate. You need to crawl before you walk or run, right? So it is doing things in, in piece by piece, one step at a time. And there are all kinds of analytics, as I said. There are a lot of use cases. I mean, utility may be uh, worried more about reliability or maybe may be, thinking, may be thinking a lot more about distributed energy resources if you look at the West Coast. And if you go to the East Coast, it's more about reliability. So there are different things that utilities are looking for. So the first thing is that they need to pick one area. Say, so I'm going to address this. And then apply that using analytics to a certain part of the system, maybe a smaller five substations, 10 substations, a smaller region, take a, a small piece and apply it there and then see cost, do a cost benefit analysis and, and it can be used in front of regulators or different kinds of ways. And then if it is beneficial, just expand it to the relevant areas. And typically you can do that. I mean, analytics algorithm, products are not that you have to apply to the whole utility. You can actually scale it as you go along and that's how they need to plan. When we do analytics, we do not uh, view the meters as just a financial or a billing type of uh, sensor. It is actually an edge sensor. So they, will, they can send voltage signals, they can send outage signals, restoration signals. They are basically edge sensors. And till, till recently, till smart grid, utilities did not have that visibility. Now that there are all these sensors or transformer sensors or line sensors, there is a lot of information that can be gathered from these, these sensors, maybe in real time and may not be in real time, close to real time, which is sufficient. So, if, if, so all these grid 
edge sensors. They're basically providing all this different information that can be brought into a central location and we can apply analytics to it, give a lot of visibility into the distribution system as well as provide actionable intelligence to utilities to manage, operate, and plan their system way better than what it used to be.